You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the options playbook, the program where we break down cutting edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Trade King Group. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to TradeKing.com slash ODD to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Trade King LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. Now let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Trade King Senior Options Analyst and author of the Options Playbook. Last week, we talked a little bit about oil, and we used the USO, the United States uh, Oil Fund, to talk about a way to use a fig leaf as opposed to buying stock outright. Last week's show, I also promised you that I'd show you a reasonably inexpensive way to ensure a USO position. So today, our focus is going to be on back spreads around a long stock position in the USO. So if you have the options playbook on your table and you'd like to read along at home, please turn to page 87. You can always go to optionsplaybook.com too if you have a computer and find the strategies tab. And in that tab, you can look for back spread with puts. And then lastly, if you have the Kindle version of the options playbook, just look for the section titled the plays. And in that ta table of contents, you will see links to this strategy. Okay, so let's preference this. Last week, we talked about a barrel of crude oil hitting a 52-week low, and that's on the New York Mercantile Exchange. It's a futures contract. And we said that that equated to the USO also hitting a 52-week low, which is the ETF that, tracks, uh, that tries to track uh, a barrel of oil and the price of oil. Guess what? Since we've talked, USO has now hit another 52-week low, and so I thought it would be time to maybe talk about how we can try to ensure a stock position in the USO. So last week, we talked about just having 100 shares of stock and using a fig leaf to try to leverage a position going out you know, eight months or, or so in time and – Instead of buying 100 shares, we were going to use options that if we could get a, a couple of point move up, that that might help our position that we're already down on. Well, if you were down on, a hun on your 100 shares last week, you were definitely down this week. Uh, right now, we had the USO close today, and this taping is on August 12th after the market closed. Uh, it was only down five cents today. It closed at 14.44 but it is lower than it was last week. Okay, so we're going to get creative here with our uh, protection and our strategy that we're going to use to protect our current position. We're going to try to give you some protection, but we're not going to pay for it up front. And we're going to do that by entering a back spread. And we've talked about back spreads already on previous versions of Options Playbook Radio, but we've never tied it to a stock position. And when I'm tying it to the stock position, there's you'll notice in options playbook that we put uh, an AKA section, which basically means different names for the strategy. And in that section, we actually call it a pay later put. And I think that name 
applies a lot more for how I'm going to set up this strategy today. Because what we're going to do is we're going to put on some insurance and we're not going to have a cost to do that. And bottom line is, if the stock continues on up, there will be no cost to us to put on this insurance policy. All right. So let's go on in and let's set up the trade. And we'll talk about the things to think about and everything that goes along with using a back spread with puts to try to protect a long position in a stock. And Make life simple, we're going to talk about 100 shares of stock once again in USO. So right now, USO closed at $14.44. So if you don't know what a backspread is, I'd hit pause right now and go back and look at it or at least read through that section in the options playbook. Because I'm going to give you a real life example, and I always have to disclaim that if we do this on Options Playbook Radio, this is not meant to be a recommendation by any means. We're just trying to learn here, and that's what the theme is of Options Playbook Radio. So you can learn and then apply it to some other positions that you might have at a later date. Okay, so in this scenario, what we're going to do is we're going to sell an in-the-money put to try to help pay for and a couple of out of the money puts. So this is also known as a ratio spread. So let's go on in and set up the strikes. Now, continue to remember that you have 100 shares of stock. You've had it for a while. You're holding on to that position. Now you're still, you're, you're bullish but nervous uh, is the way to say it here as far as that's, that's my feeling and outlook on the marketplace if I want to consider this strategy. Okay, so with this strategy that we're going to look at today, our strike prices are going to surround the current stock price. With the stock at $14.44, we're going to look to sell the in the money put, right, which is the higher strike in this instance. So that would be the 15 strike put that's currently trading for, let's call it a, a 105, as far as that is concerned. And then we're going to go on out and buy two 14 strike puts. And those 14 strike puts are currently trading for 53 cents. All right. So we already have 100 shares of stock. We are selling and in the money put to help pay for two out of the money puts. Now, we have the stock, so one of those puts is going to be used to protect the downside of the current stock position. And the other put is going to be used to help reduce the risk of the in the money short put position. Now, I gave you the... the uh, the standard quotes of each strike, we got one that's trading for 105 and we're going to try to buy two that's trading for 53 cents. So if we sell that one and we buy that two, the midpoint, and I'm just going to round off, is going to be right at zero. Or in the options world vernacular, we'd say we could get that trade done for even. So bottom line is we are not paying for this protection on the downside. Okay, so now as far as the expiration is concerned, we're going to be looking at the September 18th expiration. That is the monthly expiration for USO, and that gives us 37 days to be in this trade. So it's going to give us 37 days approximately of protection. Now, here's the big caveat here. If we do this trade, we really want the stock to either move up or move down. And we're hoping that it will make a move of 50 cents up to the strike price, up to the 15 strike, or it's going to make a 50 cent move down to the 14 strike. We just hope that the stock doesn't stay right where it's at. And hence the name pay later put. If the stock doesn't move at all, we, didn't, we put this trade on basically for zero, but because we've sold the in-the-money put 
and used it to buy two out of the money puts, that means we actually have a put spread on in the account. So if the stock doesn't move at all, we're going to be down 50 cents on this trade. So we do want the stock to make some type of movement. Now, on the upside, we do need that stock to go up above 15. If it doesn't move at all on this trade and the stock stays right where it's at, at 14.44, we would be down 56 cents on this trade. So we're hoping for a little bit of a move up, and we're a little bit, like I said, we're bullish, but we're a little bit nervous. But now if the stock continues on down and it goes down to the 14 strike, we could, in this instance, lose an entire dollar as far as this trade is concerned. And that's just on the back spread with puts. Now. From 14 to continue on down, 13, 12, 11, guess what? We're long one more put than we're short. So now this actually provides protection from 14 all the way down to zero on our 100 shares of stock. So bottom line is we're putting on a protective trade that is looking for a little bit of movement. Our best case scenario is that the stock skyrockets and we have 100 shares of stock and we stayed in it because we were able to put this position on and we will profit all the way up as far as our stock is concerned and not have any concern about our back spread with puts that we put on. Our downside is, is if the stock stays where it's at or just kind of meanders down to the 14 strike, which is just over 3% down on the downside, which the stock has been moving 50 cents a day for many days in a row. If it makes meanders just on down to that price and it sticks right at that 14 strike, well, then we have an issue as far as our put spread is concerned. And that, if it landed right at expiration, right at that strike price, well, then we could lose a maximum of a dollar on our back spread with puts and whatever loss we would also have on the stock we would have to include. Now, if we do this whole trade, though, um, let's go through the, the entire scenario again. So if you got a pen handy and you want to take a note on this, here's what our position would be. We had a long stock position in our account. That stock is currently at $14.44. We're going to sell in, in the money put. And we're only going to sell one of them. We're going to go out to the September 18th expiration, which is 37 days out. And we're going to sell the 15 strike put, which is approximately uh, 50 cents in the money. To be exact, it would be 56 cents in the money with the stock at 14.44. We are then going to use the proceeds from selling that one put option to buy two out of the money put options. And these put options would have the strike of 14. They would have the same expiration up uh, uh, September 18th, and they'd go out 37 days. And the proceeds from selling the in the money call will pay for the two out of the money calls. And we're long 100 shares, we're short one of the 15 puts, and we are long two of the 14 puts. And in this instance, we're kind of hoping the stock will move. Either we're going to move to the downside, beyond the 14 strike, down to 13, 12 and a half, because we're protected on our 100 shares. Or we want it to move up above the 15 strike and continue on up and hopefully skyrocket and go all the way up to 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. But if the stock at least gets to 15, then we don't have any cost for our insurance. So we put this whole thing on and we don't have any concern as far as the back spread is concerned from 15 on up. Now, things to think about here. Uh, I chose an expiration that went out 37 days. Why didn't I pick 90 days? Why didn't I pick 180 days? Uh, you know, I want protection for a longer period of time. Bottom line is, 
The marketplace knows that. I'd rather have longer term protection that I didn't pay for, right, to start out as opposed to shorter term protection. So if I go out further and further in time, there's no way I'd be able to do this trade for even or basically be able to sell the 15 strike put and be able to pay for two of the 14 strike puts. It just the further you go out in time, the harder that is to get done. Now, let's also say uh, the market does start going down, but it starts going down right away. If it's going down right away, this backspread does better than it does at expiration. In other words, if I do get that big move down, that backspread will profit a lot more right away than it will right at expiration. Your main risk in this trade is at expiration if it's right at that 14 strike. Because after all, we have bought two option contracts and time decay is really going to affect the fact that we own two of those as opposed to just being short one of the in the money puts. Okay. So if I do with that being said, so if I do put on this trade, if I want to avoid losing that entire dollar, when I get down to day 10, day 11, day nine, when I get in that area, if it's anywhere by my 14 strike, I just kind of want to get out of the trade. And I'm probably going to have a lot less than that dollar loss that I, I would have had uh, if I waited to expiration and went right out on my short strike. All right. Now, also, you got to include that if the stock does go down, you're losing money on the stock, too. The stock, these this strategy will only protect you from 14 on down. So this is an interesting alternative to just buying a put outright. If I wanted to go on out and just buy that 14 strike put as an insurance policy, right, I would have to pay 53 cents for that put. So if I'm paying 53 cents for that, that's my total risk or my total cost of insurance. So if it came down to 14 and it didn't move at all, I would lose the 50 cents on the or the 44 cents on the stock, and I'd also lose the money on the put too. So I'd be in a very similar situation uh, if the stock just went to 14 and I had bought just bought the out of the money put. Now the real difference here is that if the stock did continue on up with that 14 strike put, and I was just long that put as a protective put. I would lose that entire investment. I would lose that 53 cents and I would hopefully make up enough money on the stock to help pay for it. All right. So this is just an interesting way to try to ensure a position that you're a little bit nervous on. All right, that's it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you have a topic you'd like to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer on the program, we have a Facebook page specifically for Options Playbook Radio. You can send a question in there, uh, and you can find a link to archive versions of Options Playbook Radio. Just go to facebook.com slash trade king and look for the special tab that we have set up on the homepage. You can also, also send your questions to me at theoptionsguy at tradeking.com. And as always, you can connect with me via the Trade King Trader Network and my blog called The Option Guy. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook was brought to you by Trade King Group. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to TradeKing.com slash ODD to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through TradeKing LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.